the orgasm was very present and powerful, just invisible. So it's Casper the Friendly Calm. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't you dare call him that. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. And today I'm gonna to react to an episode of And Just Like That. For those of you who don't know, And Just Like That is a sequel to Sex and the City. And the characters are now significantly older. So they're starting to have more sexual issues. So let's check out this show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Look like that. Oh yeah. Yeah, just like you that. You are so fucking oh, hot. Oh, you are so fucking hot. I'm close, Ooh. baby. Harry, Harry, do you want to come on my tits? It's not even my birthday. Oh, it's a God. Birthday thing. I know, but it's like birthday and Hanukkah and Christmas all rolled into one. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. 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 Harry. All right, guys, so what exactly is going on here? Well, he clearly looks like he climaxed, but no ejaculate came out. Now, what exactly does that mean? So it could be one of three things. One is that he really didn't climax and he was faking it. The second thing is he could have what's called retrograde ejaculation. Now, retrograde ejaculation is when the ejaculate volume, instead of going forward, goes backwards into the bladder. And the reason for this is because during ejaculation, one of the first steps is that the bladder neck closes so that when you get that forceful ejaculation, it can actually move outside of the urethra rather than backwards into the bladder. And why this happens can be a multitude of reasons. Most commonly, it's because you're taking a medication that may help reduce the prostate size or um, typically that's the most common medication and that will cause retrograde ejaculation. Or you've had a surgery like a transurethral resection of the prostate for an enlarged prostate that can also cause retrograde ejaculation. And then you can also be diabetic. Also neurologic conditions, spinal cord injuries, those sorts of things can also play a role. Now, the other thing it could be is an ejaculation. Now this is basically that you're not making any ejaculate volume at all. And what this means is that there's either a blockage, an ejaculatory duct obstruction, or there could again be a neurologic condition, or you could have had surgery that then disconnected essentially the prostate and the seminal vesicles, basically the vas from the ejaculatory duct, like a radical prostatectomy, for example. There was nothing there. And according to Harry, the orgasm was very present and powerful, just invisible. So it's Casper the Friendly Come. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't you dare call him that. Why are you looking at me? She's the potty mouth. Excuse me, can I ask how you made this discovery? Well, normally, he would come inside me. Uh-huh. This was just a special treat since the kids are away. Oh. So who knows how long it's been going on. So I've talked about this before in general, like how women feel about ejaculation. And generally speaking, they want their partner to ejaculate. And I think that's correlated with climax. But the volume and the force are often less important. Now, in this case, she's saying that she never really noticed before. And so maybe it doesn't really matter. Like, yes, this experience experience when you're trying to ejaculate visibly and you're not seeing it can be distressing, but maybe it's really not as bothersome to her as she really thinks. But let's continue watching. Nothing to worry about. Oh, good. Good. Excuse me about the power bar. Busy day, low blood sugar. What? Um, you just had a dry orgasm or retrograde ejaculation. Your semen went into your bladder instead of your penis. Why would he do that? Um, All right, so this is really odd, right? Like this guy is basically acting like it's an afterthought. And I realize that as a doctor, urologist, whatever, you see a lot of the same things over and over again. And he's completely right. This is not dangerous. The only problem with this is if you're trying to have a baby, in which case you need the ejaculate to come out the tip of the urethra into the vaginal canal. So he's right that it's not dangerous, but he's being very flippant. He's having a snack. He can barely, he's not even like finishing chewing before he he starts talking to the patient. And like, this can be really devastating for guys, right? They're one, they're already nervous to come see you. And in this case, his wife came with him, but I will tell you that that's not common. The large majority of guys come to the office with like by themselves. So they're already super nervous. And then you've got a doctor who's like chewing on food and making just light of the situation. Not cool. It's your bladder instead of your penis. Why would it do that? Um, 
Dr. Cheng, once this starts happening, is there any way to... Redirect traffic? Yes. Sure. Right now, your muscles are not well coordinated with your pelvic floor. I have one of those? Yes, you sure do. Yes, he does. Ever heard of Kegels? Heard of it. It's all I eat during the high holidays. Honey, not Kugel. Kegels. All right, so in this case, he is talking about a weak pelvic floor. Now, sometimes having a weak pelvic floor, which as I've talked about before, is very, you know, is very common as men age. And the pelvic floor is essentially a group of muscles that sits in the pelvis where all your organs sit. And these muscles, just like any other muscle, can get strengthened or weakened or dysfunctional. And in this case, um, sometimes when a man gets older, those muscles can get weak and they can have a more weaker ejaculate volume. So as I've mentioned in my prior video about ejaculation, the force of ejaculation can be very strong. It can go as far as 30 to 60 centimeters away from the source. And as you age, that can reduce down to 10 to 30 centimeters or even a dribble. And that's because partially of a weakened pelvic floor. That is not an explanation for retrograde ejaculation. And doing Kegels, which are exercises to strengthen the pelvic floor, will not improve retrograde ejaculation. It will improve ejaculatory dribble or weak ejaculation. They're exercises to strengthen the muscles down there. I'm an expert. I can teach you, it'll be fun. I bet not as fun as Kugel. Okay, we're gonna lift and squeeze the sphincter. But remember, it's not your butthole. You're not trying to hold in a fart. Because I already know how to do that. Yes. So, remember what he said. Think of your penis like an elephant's trunk slurping from the river. Okay. <laughs> slurp it up. Oh, baby. Come on now, slurp. Let's see it. Yes, ma'am. Slurp. Slurp. You call that a slurp? Oh, give me your hand. Feel mine. Miss, we hardly know each other. Harry, get serious. Do you ever want to come again or not? I do. I, I want to I wanna shoot all over you. Okay, then. Let's do this. Are you freaking kidding me? It's like a steel trap down there. You are welcome. I do three sets of ten three times a day so you can suck it up. If you are considered to have a weak pelvic floor or you think you may have one, the best thing to do is to get evaluated first. So this urologist didn't do any sort of physical examination, but you can assess a male's pelvic floor by palpating the muscles of the pelvic floor through a rectal exam. Now it's not the most comfortable experience, but it is a valuable one to determine if those muscles are generally weaker or tighter or dysfunctional. It is valuable to get training from a certified pelvic floor physical therapist. And this is because we don't know how to do Kegels. Even women are not great at doing Kegels. So, and men definitely have never thought about it in their entire life. So one, I wouldn't recommend doing it with your wife. And she's not describing it horribly. Like you do want to sort of um, lift the penis up. Those are the muscles you want to target. You don't want to squeeze your abdomen or your gluteal muscles. You want to squeeze those pelvic floor muscles and you want to, and you're doing them lying down to start and squeeze and relax just like you're at the gym. Now, if you are starting to do them and you have any pain or discomfort, or you feel like you're having problems urinating, pain with sex, pain with ejaculation, problems with bowel movements, please stop because you can very quickly get a dysfunctional pelvic floor or get a tight pelvic floor, which can then cause more problems. Now she says she does three sets of 10, three times a day. Now, what is that? Is that normal? Is that okay? Should everyone be doing them? Now, I would say that if you have normal function, you're having good sexual function, you're having normal urination, normal bowel movements, you don't have to do Kegel exercises. And if you are doing them, certainly start by doing them just very minimally, like do them lying down, do maybe 10 in the morning, 10 at night, and then slowly you can work your way up to doing them sitting or doing them standing. Um, just like you go to the gym, you have to Continue those exercises to keep the area strong. Now, come on, two, three, four. Slurp that sperm from the pelvic floor. The rhyming helps. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. Come on. All right, so you might be wondering, what can you even do for retrograde ejaculation? Well, in fact, there are some small studies that have looked at taking medications like Sudafed or Sudafedrin, which activates certain receptors like the alpha and beta receptors and stimulates the release of a neurochemical called noradrenaline. And this then causes closure of the bladder neck. Now, this is something that usually takes about three to four days. So you need to take it consistently for three to four days. And the efficacy is pretty low, about 30%. 
The other alternative, which is even lower efficacy, which is about 20% effective, is taking anti-muscarinics. These are medications that we often use for overactive bladder, so you can try taking those as well. And usually when you combine the two, you may get a little bit better benefit. So generally speaking, if you're suffering from like a uh, spinal cord injury, you can buy certain medical grade vibrators that have a sort of higher vibratory threshold that's used and has been studied that causes some forward release of ejaculate in some cases. And then lastly, if you are trying to get pregnant, you can try to alkalinize the urine. So taking a lot of fluids and sodium bicarb, and then collecting that urine to then get the semen from the urine. Because if you urinate without alkalinizing it, the acidity in the urine will actually kill the sperm. So you can also go to the office where they'll instill a specific solution before masturbation to protect the sperm, and then you urinate it out, and then they can get the sperm that way. Or you can do directed techniques like going to the testicle or the epididymis itself to then get some sperm that way. So it can be, as I mentioned before, a pretty distressing condition and pretty frustrating for a lot of people. And it's not uncommon, but fortunately it's not dangerous in any way. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like these reaction videos, let me know. I'd love to do some more for you. Comment down below. Let me know what kind of reaction you want or what video you want me to react to. And I'd be happy to. And if you like this one, I made a like I think it was like three or four years ago, a video uh, reacting to the original Sex in the City about premature ejaculation. So check that one out. And as always, we're gonna take care of yourself because you are worth it.